hello and welcome to Kitchen Magic. I am going to tell you today a recipe for spaghetti squash. This is grown by my neighbors, amazingly. Not a farmer, not from the grocery store. I grew this in the cell, so thank you neighbors. And I am going to try to make it as flexible as possible. Everything I make, I'm going to tell you how you can change it because I don't usually cook in a way where I actually go to the grocery store and buy specific ingredients. Sometimes I do. But it's usually more that I'm looking around at what I have and trying to think of how I can use it. Which is a wonderful skill if you want to be healthy and eat well and you want to eat in your home, which I would argue is important for whatever your health goals are, whether you just want to eat more vegetables or generally eat healthier or lose weight or whatever it is. Eating in your home, real food, is going to help you do that. But it can be overwhelming and then we, you know, there's all these statistics that we watch more food being prepared on TV than we actually prepare ourselves, right? Food shows are a huge deal. People love to watch them, but most people aren't cooking themselves. So when you watch me, you can make this, okay? I'll, the only thing I've done is wash my hands. So you are going to, and I talk a lot, which slows me down. So you can actually follow along while you watch this video. Now, okay, this time, all right. If you don't have a spaghetti squash, you have to do something else, but you can boil spaghetti and just make this with noodles, right? So in general, it's very flexible. If you have a spaghetti squash, we're gonna cook with a spaghetti squash. If you don't, you put a pot of water on the stove right now and start boiling it so you can cook some noodles. And I also just want to tell you, because I have watched these and I know that the sound quality is very poor so I apologize and I want you to know that I am getting a lavalier mic and as soon as it arrives hopefully in the next day or two it's going to start sounding a lot better and today I have double the background noise well the last time my family was home and I was forced to delete that video but um, compared to just me you think my kitchen is all nice and organized, or at least filled with fruit, but why is there an extension cord on my counter? Because, oh, <laughs> I covered it with blankets to make it quieter. Blankets and pillows. That's my dishwasher. It had to come out because why did it have to come out? We have issues somewhere in the wall. So anyways, the dishwasher was running. I, I didn't want to stop it because um, it got backed up because it turned off in the middle of a cycle. Anyways, I'm not going to tell you that long story. It's not why you're here. But just know pretty soon the sound quality is going to be so much better. Okay, so the other thing I'm going to do, which is like actually right now I have a book out, Kitchen Magic, okay? This is, this is the... Um, galley proof so they put this thing on there that band is not usually on there I, I don't have my copies yet my real copies so there's a lot of it's not just recipes but there's a lot of recipes there's not a spaghetti squash recipe but the idea in this book is all about being flexible and making magic in the kitchen and the idea of um, Italian the Italian idea of le art de arrangiarsi I apologize to the Italians watching. It basically means the art of arranging, which is like the idea of something, making something out of nothing, right? So you just kind of haven't been to the store, you don't know what to do, but you can still cook a meal and I can almost promise you. And someday I would actually love to have a show where two of us are on the screen and one person shows me what's in their house and I tell them what to make with it. Wouldn't that be fun? But today I'm just gonna do it at my house. And I'm going to start with this spaghetti squash. So, like I said, if you don't have a spaghetti squash, you can actually make this recipe with any kind of noodles, all right? Whatever kind of noodles that you have. I'm going to get a chopping board. I'm going to whack this thing in half. I don't have anything out yet. So, however long this video ends up being, is how long it takes you to basically get 90% of this done and get it into the oven for the final step, which is really just going to be heating it up so you could actually eat it without doing that. My lava 
your mic is even going to work when I'm all the way over here. It's going to be amazing. But for now, I just have to speak really close. Big, sharp knife, the biggest one you have. You know what, actually? I was about to whack this in half, but I think what I'm going to do is this way, okay? I think I'm going to start it in the microwave, and I think I'm going to make it soft first. So you just poke a couple holes in it. because supposedly it can explode if you don't do that. I believe it because, you know, one time I tried to boil an egg in the microwave because I thought it would be so much faster. I was in such a hurry that I felt that I needed to boil my egg in the microwave instead of on the stove. And uh, it did explode, actually. And then another time I tried to boil a yolk in the microwave, just a yolk, and the yolk it didn't explode in the microwave. It was worse than that. It was just, how did I do that? I feel like it was in water. I don't know. I was doing something very weird and it didn't, probably didn't make any sense. But as I carry this thing with this trying to boil yolk from that microwave across over my sinks right here, I mean, just thank goodness that I wasn't looking at it because as I walked some vibration, it fully this basically boiling probably above boiling because it was probably under pressure at that point exploded up all the way onto my ceiling all over boiled egg yolk so I'm always going to poke the holes in my squash because I don't want it to explode so I'm just going to put this into whatever I can find just a big something to hold it Okay, just a big plate, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna start out actually by microwaving this. So this is the fast version. You can bake it. You can cut it first and then bake it. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. You just have to cook the guts on the inside. Okay, I am gonna look up how long to cook that for because because it didn't come from the store, it doesn't have a sticker on it that tells me how long. So I put it on high. I'm pretty sure that's correct. And we will just look this up real quick. Even when you're an excellent cook, you still have to look stuff up. How long to cook spaghetti squash in microwave? and now I get distracted by the news. News pops up on my phone all the time. It's very distracting. 15 minutes in the microwave, okay? Perfect. So I told you I'm also going to get started on the thing that I'm gonna to make tomorrow, which is the other thing um, that I had talked about. So I actually wanted to make this yesterday and then I ran out of time. So the only thing here, this is just water. It's just water that's going to get boiled. Okay, for this one, this is polenta. Okay, it's, there's lots of different types of ground up corn. Okay, so there's cornmeal. That's very fine. Generally speaking, that's for cornbread, and that's what they put underneath pizza to make it not stick. And then there's polenta, and this says corn grits, um, but I think southern corn grits are even a little bit bigger than polenta corn grits. I think you can't interchange them. If you have grits, maybe you want to Google that real quick and just check, but I'm pretty sure you can use Southern grits the same way as polenta. These are polenta grits. Oh, it says, yeah, it says it right here. You can use them the same. I do think in the South, they're a little bit, traditionally a little bit thicker, but they'll be fine. It says it right on the package. You can use them for Southern grits or polenta. So I'm just following the back basic Italian polenta. So there's six cups of water in that pot. And then when it boils, I'm gonna add two cups of polenta. Oh, and I put um, a teaspoon of salt in the water. 
All right, so we have a little bit of waiting to do, but that's perfect because we need to get the rest of the ingredients out. Okay, so I think I'm not sure if I have limes or lemons. That's a lime. Oh, good. Oh, it's my lucky day. I think this is a lemon. Sometimes you, some different species and stuff, you can't tell. Well, whatever. If it's, it's not a Mexican lime. That smells like a lime. Okay, well, this is not as limey as this one, so I'm going to use this. That's going to be for my zest. And the zest, I tell you, there's so many recipes for pasta with artichoke sauce or spaghetti squash with, I mean, artichoke sauce. Pasta with artichokes, spaghetti squash with artichokes. There's a lot of different recipes out there. But I, and I didn't come up with the idea. I saw it somewhere. But adding the lemon zest, it just takes it to another level. It's so good. All right, so we're going to zest that. I'm going to get the zester. You can use just any old grater. I have a, I have actually a zester. And I do the opposite. I try to use my zester as a grater. And a grater works better as a zester than a zester works as a grater. So, but the cool thing about this is kind of a special zester, actually. It's called Microplane. It's a sort of a fancy brand. And it's like tiny little cuts. I went to a cooking show and the lady showed me this. This is what sold it on me. It catches it right on there. I don't want to do it right over my computer, but just catches it on there. So I love the lemon zest in this dish. I think it's lemon. And I'm going to zest um, almost this whole lemon because I think it's so good. Maybe half. It might be too much to put the whole one. It's starting to turn into kind of a lot. So you can zest however much that you want to. You could just do a quarter if you're not sure about it. I'm gonna do, I think I'm just gonna do a little more than half. And all of this white stuff, people, the stuff people love to pick off of their oranges and tangerines, it's really good for you. So much of the fruit is so good for you. And that's one of the reasons why traditional diets are healthier is because they always used the, the whole plant, the whole animal. And <clears throat> different bits have different... Uh, you should try to get organic lemons and limes if you're going to zest them, if possible. You can use it if it's not... It's, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Honestly, we, we're exposed to toxins in the world. And for the most part, our bodies are very good about getting rid of them. We obviously, don't want to be overexposed. But, um, and, and our world is a little overexposed. But it's not worth worrying about if you can't get organic. Um, anyway, so yeah, the different parts have different medicine, have different benefits, nutrition. I can't remember what's in that white part. Anyway, that was a little bit hard to do, but. So I'm just gonna set that aside. And I actually love tomato sauce. I love red sauce. So I'm gonna put red sauce in my spaghetti squash. You can put it in, you can put it on half. You can leave it out, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna get a red sauce. I think I have one from earlier in the week in the fridge. I think, I'm gonna check. If not, I'm gonna grab one out of the pantry and I'm gonna use, I love these, they're grilled marinated artichoke hearts. I get them at Trader Joe's and they're so good. They're so much better when they're grilled. There's something about them. So I'm gonna get, actually that's beeping. If you can't hear it, I'm gonna grab that. I'm gonna get stuff out of the pantry. It's not done. I only did it about seven minutes. It was very hot, but I just grabbed it by the stem, and that's how I turned it without burning my finger, since I didn't have um, a hot pad or tongs. 
The stem doesn't have any water in it or very little, so it doesn't get very hot. So the stem was on, that's how I turned it. I just rotated it 180 degrees because a lot of times in the microwave, in the oven too, the stuff on the bottom gets kind of steamed more. So anyway, just try to cook it a little more evenly. And I did it another seven minutes and I might have to do more. My microwave is not very powerful. It's just kind of weakened. Stuff takes twice as long to cook in it. Okay, you know what else I grabbed? So I might put two. I love these artichoke parts, so I might just eat a bunch. I got this because I didn't go to the fridge yet, just in case I need it. And then it would be really good with olives too, right? So some things we think we need all this stuff on hand, but this all just came out of my pantry, right? And if you're doing noodles, that's out of the pantry too, if you didn't have spaghetti squash. So we need to eat fresh stuff. It's important for our health, but it's still a lot of times healthier to use like, yes, it's jarred, but guess what? This is a plant product, right? This is a plant product. This is a plant product. Plant products, our vegetables more or less and plant products are the most important thing in a healthy diet quite frankly and fresh stuff I try to eat plant products and I try to eat fresh stuff if you just make some effort in those categories you're good but if that's hard it's, there's probably something mental going on that, that's making it hard <laughs> Okay, I didn't have sauce, but I'm gonna get cheese. Okay, I'm not gonna put all this stuff in, but I want you to see what your options are. Something else, look. Capers would be good in this. Maybe either capers or olives. Okay, this is also a trick, all right? So I have this book out right now. This is available, you can go buy it. You can go to my website, AllegraLowenstein.com. I actually have some additional free recipes that you can get. You can just get those under the kitchen magic section and then it will link you to buy the book. I also have, and this is like um, the epitome of living inside my brain. <laughs> but I also have, since it might not be easy to live inside my brain, a sneak preview of one of my forthcoming books. It's, it's called Too Busy to Cook. And so it actually breaks down how I think about cooking, it breaks it down into step-by-step -step pieces, right? That's coming out next year. But if you watch enough of these, you might just understand how it works. So one of the things that I like to do is if I'm in the kitchen, right? Like I already got all this shit out, right? I made a mess. There's going to be dishes to wash. So I'll do something else that doesn't take very much work, but maybe takes time or is a mental step at the same time. Okay, so that's why I was talking about polenta. Right? I'm not going to eat two meals tonight. Polenta is very, very easy to make. Okay? And I cook a lot of times my carbs or my grains the day before. Making polenta, from, so Trader Joe's, I don't know where else, that's my main shopping place. They sell polenta in these plastic logs. And it's awesome. Okay, it's convenient. I'm, I'm all for convenience. Polenta is not hard to make and it freezes really well. 
brown rice, not hard to make. Okay, I also keep, I also buy the frozen brown rice. Because <laughs> sometimes you don't have the time. I get it. Um, but if you do this now, like, like basically you're just going to pour this in and then stir it. And that's, that's really all you do. And then you dump it into some other container and let it cool off. You can do, you could let it cool in the pot too. It would just be tall. Um, okay. So we're going to do this at the same time. And if you get hooked on these lives, you'll be able to watch me do something with this tomorrow. And then I'll freeze some of it too, probably. Sometimes I like to double the recipe, especially if it's freezable. Polenta freezes very nicely, and it's a great base for like so many very easy things. Okay, so this is just boiling water, six cups with two cups of polenta. It was on medium high to boil, and now it's on medium. I might turn it down. I think I'm gonna turn it down actually. What is it? I'll just read the instructions. Oh, simmer. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I thought I checked. Okay, so it's that. I brought it to a boil, add the polenta, simmer. Okay, if you don't have polenta, put some brown rice on the stove right now for tomorrow. Then you have brown rice. You're a step ahead tomorrow. And you're the slow step, right? It's not hard. It's just slow. Okay. So all I have to do is once in a while, every couple minutes, ideally, I, I have to stir that. That's all that it takes to do polenta. And like I said, I was going to do this yesterday. So, um... The one step that I've already done for this is that I, I put olive oil on this. Okay. This was out. It was ready. So that's it. I just put it on with my fingers. Okay, I'm going to check my squash because I heard it beep. I need a utensil though. I'm going to take this sharp knife. So I'm just going to stab it and I'm going to see... The outside actually gets kind of hard if you want it to be like soft on the inside. No, it's not done. Okay, like I said, my, um, my microwave is super weak. It takes forever. Maybe someday I'll get a, a Food Network show and I'll have uh, professional equipment and people to do some of the other work. Wouldn't that be awesome? Just the cleaning. That's all I would want to outsource. Okay, so it says 30 minutes to cook the polenta, but I don't think it will take that long. You just do it till it gets thick. Okay, so... Normally I would do this all in one dish, so this is better actually. I'm going to mix all the other ingredients for the spaghetti squash. And remember, if you don't have spaghetti squash, you can just do this with regular noodles. So same as what I'm cooking the spaghetti squash in the microwave, you just cook your noodles on the stove. Any kind of noodles, just pull them out al dente and run them under cold water to stop them from cooking. Okay, large bowl. Get yourself a large bowl. This is not my largest, but it'll have to do. It's a save. We're just being like a girl with my computer set up on a mixing bowl. My kitchen's not badly set up to do a whole performance here. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to strain the oil out of this because it's packed in oil. I think I can even do that. Okay, that's all I'm doing. Just dumping it out to get the oil. And now here's a trick that's going to change your life. This is so good. 
Okay. I use kitchen scissors for everything. So you don't have to get all the oil out because it's olive oil. Well, it's probably not. It's some it's sunflower first and then olive oil. But um, you know things are the first ingredient there's the most of. So it's artichoke, of course, first. Then the sunflower, then olive, but there's there's probably not that much olive oil because olive oil is way more expensive. All right, so there's so much. Okay, I hate doing dishes and they back up in the sink and it's just the way that life is, whatever. You want to be healthy, you got to cook, you're going to have dishes. It's just a fact of life. So this is partly to save on dishes. And also it's faster. I think it's faster. My husband thinks I'm nuts. I'm always cutting stuff up instead of chopping it. I cut pizza, I cut herbs. So this already in there. Sorry, that probably was terrible sound quality. So these are the artichoke parts. And then, I mean, you don't want to scrape the scissors on the bowl just because it will dull the scissors. You might scrape the bowl, but I don't think so. It's stainless steel. And that's it. And I just kind of give it a little stir to find the big pieces. The other thing, the other, the other reason why I do this so a lot of times I wear plastic gloves while I cook because my hands just get so dry and using kitchen scissors will also, right, because when you cook, it's like, oh, I was holding all that greasy artichoke heart and then I chopped it. So now I have to at least rinse all the oil off my hand, right? Rinse it off. And all of that in and out of the water, it just dries my fingers out. So that um, scissors also help one last time under the water. Okay, so artichokes, I think I'm gonna add some olives, but I'm not gonna add the capers. Oh, you know what? I got these out of the pantry. I'm sure I have open olives. wrong. It doesn't happen very often. <laughs> uh, see, look. Dude, scissors telling you. Snip that little edge. Get it started. All right, so this is going to add a nice little, like, salty punch. Kind of salty, tangy. So not too many, just how up. It doesn't really matter. I almost fell on the floor, but I caught it. Oh, this is the only risk of doing more than one thing at once. It'll start to stick to the bottom. Okay, if you are making polenta, make sure that you've oiled the pan that you're gonna dump it into. Yeah, you don't have to do 30 minutes. This is already super thick on the lowest temperature. There was salt already in the water. Um, I'm going to add olive oil. You can also add butter. But my uh, chili is going to happen to be vegan. And just in case, I don't have a ton of vegan friends, but sometimes it's nice to keep things vegan. You can, I'll put a little cheese on, but you know, if I finish this tomorrow and I know, it's just nice sometimes to mix it up too, and olive oil is so good for you. Okay, they were so wrong, it's not 30 minutes. It's thick and I'm taking it off. That was like five minutes. So, you, I've dumped it in this tray that was already had oil. That's important, that will help it come out. Polenta freaking easy or what? So 
I'm just gonna spread this out. So making it a little bit flat. So that's it. Okay, so um, so now I'm gonna have polenta basically as soon as that's cooled off, it'll just firm up and you can cut it into squares and that's it and then you have polenta and it makes a great base you can do it like instead of noodles you can put you could put all this stuff on it the rest of the meal that I'm preparing that's going to go with the spaghetti squash you should put, you could put this all on polenta you can just do like sausages and greens and onions cooked up on top of it you, so we don't need a lot of meat but you could use real sausages you could use veggie sausages um it's, it's endless. Polenta is very versatile. And it freezes. That's awesome. And it defrosts well. I mean, you can freeze anything, but do you want to eat it after you've defrosted it? You can't, you can hardly tell with polenta. So here it's, I'll just lift it. That's it. So I'll just cut it into like 12 pieces later tonight. So my super slow microwave, I'm checking it. Ooh, yeah, it's good. All right, and you know what? This is real life, right? Real cooking. I don't remember everything. It's not all the same order. I'm back and forth. So that's why I'm like, just follow along. It's so easy. You, it doesn't take that much time. I don't know how long this has been going. Oh, 30 minutes. I should wrap it up. But it's almost finished. And like I said, think about how much talking that I've done. If you're not jabbering away, it won't take nearly as long. And I'm on head start on tomorrow. That's huge. Let me get this out of the way. Okay, so right now, the spaghetti squash is very hot. It's kind of better to let it cool a little bit, but who has the time? So I'm just going to wash this when I'm done. And first thing, okay. Oh, that's funny that a couple of the seeds sprouted on the inside. Okay, so, um, so I'm not, I'm not touching it because it's burning hot, steaming. You can see the steam. So first I'm just going to scoop the seeds out and throw those away. So I'm just putting my trash can uh, right in front of me to scoop the seeds out. Get it up here. It's not hard. And get all the little, like, so spaghetti squash, the flesh of the squash is stringy, but then there's also these sort of, um, sort of see that kind of a slimy string that attaches to the seeds. So I just want to get that out. I'm going to lift this up so you don't have to look at the top of my head. That's kind of weird. I'm just scooping it right out, the seeds, the sprouted seeds. They don't usually sprout it, but have you ever seen that in oranges and stuff? Sometimes they just decide that they want to start growing, I guess. So, one of the things to make food a little healthier. I've already said you want to eat vegetables, eat plant products, vegetables especially. And um, 
animal products, I, don't, I, think it, I think the healthiest diet is a lot of plant products and then a little bit of animal products. I was vegetarian for a long time. I was kind of vegan for a while. I wasn't very good at it. Um, I like to eat vegetarian. I like to eat vegan. And I don't really eat meat now, but um, I'm kind of a whateveritarian now. Like, I will sometimes. But at home, I, I don't really. Well, my husband doesn't eat anything but fish. Um, so... That also helps it, but I don't have a taste for it, so it's not that big of a deal to me. But um, you know, a, a lot of people they're they're changing their approach. Like uh, Mark Bittman, super famous in the food world, right? And his whole approach has shifted, where he's like, eat meat, eat whatever you want, but just use less of it. And that's a really simple, right? So a lot of my work as a coach is about undoing these uh, sort of weird rules and restrictions that we give ourselves that ultimately sabotage our attempts to be healthier, right? That's why I said if most of us know what we need to do to be healthier, it's, it's very simple really. And if we struggle with that, there's something else going on. And I don't say that from a place of judgment. I'm someone who used to struggle very much specifically with sugar binging and I tried for ages and ages. So this, right, it's actually kind of awesome about um, spaghetti squash. When you cook it, the shell gets super hard and it's very easy to scrape this out. Now, I will admit that usually when I make this, maybe every other time, I actually will try to mix the stuff up and then put it back in the shell and then bake it in the shell as some fancy presentation. But I'm trying to remember that it's a total hassle and every time I've done that, I, I've made a huge mess because it's all fallen out of the shell. But it, it, if you want to do that, it, it, it's hard. It can, listen, it can make a serving dish, a fancy serving dish, but it is a little bit of a hassle. So I'm just dumping it into a bowl. If I can get it out. And people who say spaghetti squash can sub for noodles and you can't tell the difference, they're wrong. It's really not that similar to noodles, but it's delicious in its own way. Okay, and like this one, I don't know if I overcooked it. It doesn't, it doesn't seem that overcooked, but um, sometimes, I don't know, I feel like for me, so here's the deal. If you're not familiar with spaghetti squash, see how it's kind of like little strings? The way, oh, that's on my computer now. Just throw that in the sink because they say keyboards are one of the most disgusting things in people's lives. <laughs> and it's definitely true about mine now. <laughs> now that it has spaghetti squash on it. Um, anyway, it, it comes in these little stringy bits. That's what I'm that's not this that's not the slimy string of the seeds, but see it breaks into those things. But is it like noodles? Not really. But it's delicious. I love this dish. It's very fast and easy. It's great for parties. Holiday season, guys. Um, you know, we're all struggling. Like, I love, I still love sweets. Oh, that's what I didn't finish telling you that. So I, um, I used to binge on sugar and it was terrible. And then I would try to quit and stop eating it completely. And that's, that's the mental thing, right? You go from one to the other and it just, it doesn't work for most people, for the majority of people. It turns into a, a roller coaster yo-yo and um, fails to actually allow us to be healthy. And then we feel bad about ourselves too because we feel like it's about willpower and it's about like our moral whatever and it's not. Okay, so in the bottom of this bowl, remember I already put the artichokes. I don't remember how many olives that I put. You can add cheese, you can add sausage. Oh. Oh, spinach. Shoot, I should have put that in first. So I want the spinach to wilt. I almost always, I mean, let me do this. I listened to my last video and the plastic bags are very loud and annoying. So I apologize for that. And like I said, I'm going to be getting a lavalier mic. So I want the spinach to wilt, which we can pop this back into the oven. Um, 
but you may want to serve it right away. And, and even in the oven, I will probably just broil the top of this. So I switched to a big fork because um, it will separate. Look, it'll start, the fork will do a better job of getting it into those stringy bits, which is why it's called spaghetti squash. Oh, and um, yeah. Oh, you know what else would be really good in this? So uh, I'm not going to explain that, but that's too complicated. But um, this is actually leftovers from another meal. But we finished the rest of it. So this is this is veggie sausage, which you can use regular sausage um, with like a little bit of spinach and onions. I love spinach because we eat in a salad and if we... If it starts to get shriveled at all, it cooks down into almost nothing. And then you can eat it in one meal, the rest of the bag, or a whole bag. So again, my lovely kitchen scissors, saving me from a hand drying hand rinse and a dirty dish. This would also be great if you had onions. You should cook the onions first since when this goes into the oven again, it's just going to be to melt the cheese and heat it up if we're not eating if we're not eating it already hot. Like if I if I was doing this ahead, this is also great for parties because you can do it ahead. So when we get to the end, I'm going to put this into a casserole dish. You could put it in the fridge and then heat it up in the oven and it, that will melt the cheese or you put it in a dish Put the cheese on top and just broil it to melt the cheese so that's some sausage in there whatever kind it doesn't really matter i should have wilted that spinach but it will wilt eventually either from the heat of the squash now or um when i reheat it it will it will wilt so just try to break up, like, I might have to get two utensils, but you just kind of stab the fork in. You want to sort of break up all of that spaghetti squash. So I'm just going to, the dirty spoon I already had, I'm just going to try to kind of tear it in two. And the fork works great for that. Two big forks would be perfect for this. So I am trying to wrap this up. I, I like meals that take 30 minutes, okay? You probably do too. And I know I've gone a little bit over, but like I said, um, if you're making this for the first time, it's a lesson and I talk a lot, so um, you can do this faster if you don't talk. Or have a friend over and have a glass of wine and talk a lot. And then it doesn't matter if it takes 30 minutes. And then I don't think I finished putting the olives in because I dealt with the polenta. So I don't see a lot of olives. I'm going to add a few more. You could dice the olives. You could chop them with kitchen scissors. I like them whole because um, they're like, you know, they're so salty and good. Kind of nice to get that burst of flavor. And then it's pretty much, oh, the zest. I like this zest. It makes makes the dish. It's going to bring the flavor out so much. I think I'm not going to mix the red sauce in. I'll put it on the side when I serve it. So, oh, just smelling it with the lemon zest now. It's so delicious. I wish you could smell it. Oh my gosh, it's so good. You could do, I might do a second jar. It looks like a lot, enough artichokes. So just make sure it's stirred well. A, a big bite of lemon zest would probably be pretty weird. You can leave the lemon zest out. Yeah, this I just gotta beat these little pieces in. It's a couple ones that don't want to break up. And it's pretty much ready to go. 
gosh, I almost feel like you could um, serve this chilled. There's like a cold, there's like a cold side dish even. I don't know. I don't know if that would work or not. So cheese, oh, by the way, these are amazing. They're becoming kind of trendy. Um, it's bees, it's a, it's naturally antibacterial. It's beeswax and um, they do like a pine resin and they last for about a year and they're amazing for cheese. Sometimes I keep my vegetables in them. They, they breathe more so things will dry out, but they won't get moldy at all. It's kind of amazing, but I think just to wrap this up fast, I'm just gonna use my pre-shredded cheese. So, you know, a lot of times cheese, a, a melty cheese, so this is mozzarella, it's soft, it melts really easy. That'll be delicious in this, but you could do a hard cheese and it won't be melty stringy, but it will have delicious flavor. Okay, so this isn't very much cheese. This is just to add that element. And you can leave it out. You could totally leave it out. Or just put it on top, um, which would make it lower fat, lower calorie, less animal products. And yeah, you could do chicken in this instead of sausage. That would be great. You don't need a lot. We, we're so obsessed with protein, but um, we really, we, we, we very, very, very rarely are protein deficient in the modern developed world. So I'm just gonna show you how fast and easy polenta is. Look, it's, it's already, it's warm, so I won't cut it yet, but I mean, I can practically lift it up, see? So I'm just going to let that cool completely. And that's the thing I'm doing for tomorrow. Okay, so I need another dish. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pour this into another kind of casserole dish, baking dish. Do you love my green cookware? I've been decluttering my house for... I mean, I've been working on this for... I didn't even have that much stuff, but just builds up for like two, three years. I've been really trying to work hard and these used to be underneath all these other baking dishes and I never used them except like for a special occasion. And then I got rid of a bunch of the other ones and I was like, I'm just going to use these all the time. They're, I, they make me happy. Okay. So I'll pop this over here. Sorry. The lavalier is on its way. I'm going to pour this in. I probably should have oiled the dish. I didn't think about it. If you haven't done it yet, oil yours. Sometimes that just, it does nothing more than make it easier to clean. You could do kale, by the way. Yeah, that spinach is already wilted. Um, you would need to probably steam the kale first or um, definitely give this a second bake in the oven to soften the kale or slice it up super fine. And then I'm just gonna put a little more cheese on the top. You could leave it off. You could do it instead of the cheese in the middle. I'm doing both. I'm just gonna, this isn't a very big bag. I'm just gonna use it up. So that's it, that's, that's done basically. If I was really desperate, I could microwave this to melt the cheese. It would take, for you, probably two or three minutes, for me, probably 10. No, maybe four or five. Um, you can broil it and then we'll get crispy and brown on the top or um, just bake it again. Like if I put this in the fridge and eat it tomorrow, just bake it again. So that's it guys. Tomorrow I will be back. I will make my polenta chili bake tomorrow. I hope that you enjoyed this. Remember to check it out at AllegraLowenstein.com. You can get yourself a copy of Kitchen Magic. You can also uh, sign your name up so I will tell you when Too Busy to Cook comes out. 
And I have tons of other goodies on there too. Leave a comment while you're there. I would love to hear from you.